Welcome back, Math 30-2, and today we are looking at exponents and logarithms lesson one review and preview. So the reason why we're starting with exponents is because it's very important to master exponents before we move on to logarithms. The more you know exponents, the easier logarithms will be. Because eventually you'll find out that logarithms are just inverses of exponents. That's it. So in order to understand logarithms, you must really understand exponents. It's the exact, and inverse means it's the exact opposite of exponents. Therefore, they're very related, and in order to understand logarithms, you must really understand exponents. Now, we're going to review with exponents laws and their definitions in order to break into logarithms, so ease you into it. Therefore, you'll really have a good understanding. Starting off here, we're looking at some definitions. So the power is everything in the circle, right? Power is the base and the exponent. The base is your big number, your big letter. This X is your base, the N is your exponent, okay? And the power is everything together. So if we look at this here, X to the M is a power. X to the N is another power. So here we have a product of powers with the same base. So that's the product law, product of powers with the same base. What do you end up doing? Well, we go, we have to add our exponents together. That's it. Now, if you want any more clarification for this, come see me tomorrow in class, and I'll explain and show you how each one of these are derived and how they make these formulas. And I'll help you set them up so it's easier for you to understand why these laws are the way they are. Next one is quotient law. Well, when we're dividing, that's the same as x to the m. Notice, once again, they're the same base. And we subtract them, and if they're the same base, we have powers with the same base, and we're dividing them, we can subtract our exponents. Next one here we're looking at is the power of a power. So here's my power, and we have an exponent for that whole power, power of a power. Okay, so that's just the same as x m multiplied by n, all right? Next one is power of a product. So we have a product in there, and we have the n. Well, we know it's being multiplied in. Now there's brackets. Normally if there's a bracket, we have to use the distributive law. So we're just going to have x to the n, y to the n. Okay, so it's kind of distributed by that. Next one here, we're looking at power of a quotient. So that's going to be the same thing. Distributive log n, so there's brackets. That's a little fancy thing. Distributive log. So there's an imaginary one there. m times 1 is m, so it's x to the m. And there's an imaginary one there. y to the m. 1 times m is m. There we go. Simple. Okay? Next one is the integral rule. Well, we have a negative exponent. That means the integral rule. A lot of times you'll see on the test. As mathematicians, we'll see you check your understanding and we say, we'll give you a very fancy big question and say, but with positive exponents, therefore you must use the integral rule. Well, no problem. We just take the reciprocal of it. That's it. And then it's positive. We don't switch any of these signs. The only sign we switch is this negative. The x doesn't become negative. It still says positive because the only thing we're getting rid of is the negative exponent. So that's the only thing that switches and we flip it. Okay, if you need that explained, once again, come see me tomorrow, I'll explain why it's like that. Next one is the rational exponents rule. All right, so this is, we use this fancy sign like this, and we have the n on the outside, and we have x to the n. Or, we wrote with an n there, and we have x and all this to the power of m. That's the two ways of writing it. Sometimes this way is better, sometimes this way is better. It just depends on what you want to do. Okay, use the exponent laws to simplify the following. Well, we take a look at this one. What is this essentially? That is our product law. Same base, different exponents. So we just add them together, exponents together. X to the 5. Look at this one here. Same base. Hey, we're dividing both powers. Quotient law. 6 minus 2, which is the same as x to the 4. Next one is... Hey, power to a power. Ah, no problem. That's x to the 5 multiplied by 4, which is the same as x to the 20. Take a look at this next one here. Hmm. Those are brackets. 
And there's two things in the brackets. It's a distributed rule. There's an imaginary one there, an imaginary one there. So we have x to the 3 and y to the 3. There we go. Next one is this here. Ah, look at this. There's a bracket around both the 3 and the x. So there's a product in there. And there's a power, power of a product. So distributed rule again. It must go to the x, it must go to the 3. So we have 3 to the 3 multiplied by x to the 3 which is the same as 27, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3, 27, multiplied by x to the 3. Okay? And this is another answer, other answer, and there's my last one. Okay? So there we go, that one's done. Next one says, we want to express these without brackets and with positive exponents. All right. So, first one, that's a negative exponent. Negatives aren't our friends for this one. It says we only want positive people, no negative people around, so no negative numbers. So let's get rid of that negative. What do we do? Integral exponent law. So we just use the integral. So we just flip it around, so it's 1 over x to the 3. Ah, nice. Easy. Okay. Well, this one's a little bit more complicated, though. Hmm. I could go about this two different ways. So, I have the product rule. So this multiplied by this. So first let's go to the numbers multiplied together, because only numbers can be multiplied together, and variables can be multiplied together. All right? Those are the only things that we can multiply together. 2 times 4 is 8. Now, 4, x times x, ooh, same basis, different exponents. Product law, we are going to add those. So it's x to the 3 plus negative 4. Well, what's 3 plus negative 4? That gives me 8x to the negative 1. Ah, now we have this negative 1. What is that going to be? That's an integral exponent. That's easy. That is 8 over x. Okay? So this one, I did like that. I did it first, like that. The next one, I'll do it a slightly different way. You choose which one you like better. So here we have brackets again. Brackets. Got to get rid of the brackets. Well, we have the 3 on the outside. There's nothing we could do to simplify inside the brackets. There's the 3 on the outside. Well, that's distributable, really. So 3 must be multiplied into both. So I'm going to have 2 to the 3 and x to the 4 multiplied by 3. Well, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And 4 times 3 is 12, so x to the 12. There we go. Take a look at the next one, D. All right, this 3 must go into everything. So first we must do brackets. Let's look at bit mass here. Well, everything in the brackets, good, done. Next is exponents. This will not multiplication. Next is exponents. We must deal with this 3 first. That pesky 3 on the outside. So let's get rid of it and put them into both. This guy and that guy. Because there's imaginary 1 there. So it's kind of, there's a product in there, so we have to multiply into both. So I'm going to get 5, and we have 3 to the 3, and we're going to have x to the 6, product one. Well, that's going to be 5, 3 times 3, we said 3 to 3 earlier, is 27, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So we have 27 multiplied by x to the 6. Now, 5 times 27 is going to be, well, 5 times 20 is 100, and then 5 times 7, because this is 20 groups, and another 7 groups of 5 is 35, so it's 135 divided by x to the 6. All right. Next one here. We have 5x to the negative 3. So this one I'm going to do a little bit different. Well, this top part, I could always subtract. So negative 3 subtract negative 2 is negative 1. So it's 5 over x. But I'm going to do this a different way, probably a more complicated way. But you could do it how we did this one here with that one. But I'm going to flip them first. So what do we do if it's a negative? This is like 5x to the negative 3. It's the same thing as saying 5 all over x to the 3, isn't it? Now, x to the negative 2, 1 over x to the negative 2, is the same thing as saying, well, we have to flip it x squared all over 1, right? 1x squared. So what are we left with? So this here is going to be 
x squared all over x to the 3. Now I'll subtract those. If we cancel these off, I'm going to show right here, x squared is x times x, x to the 3 is x, x, x. Cancel, 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 cancel. I'm going to be left with 5 over x, because there's only going to be an x on the bottom. So we're left with 5 over x. Now, let's take a look at the last one. First thing I'm going to do for this one is actually flip that guy. All right. So I'm going to have it 12 all over b to the 1 over 2, and I have 3b here. Now, this 12 and 3 can cancel off, can't they? So I'm going to be left with 4 on the top, I have b to the 1 half, and I have b to the 1. So this is power, product of powers, right? It's product law. Now, our problem is there's fractions. Oh, pesky fractions. How do we solve fractions again? Ah, we need common denominators. So, I'm going to have 4 all over b to the 1 over 2, and we have b to the 2 over 2, because 2 over 2 is the same as 1. So, 2. So, this is going to give me 4 all over b to the 3 over 2, and you can leave that as your answer, or you can put it this way. We could have 4, and we'll have b, all, and we square root it, and it's to the power of 3. We could go that way as well. There's more than one way, right? All right? There we go. Next question is class example number three. Without your calculator, determine the following. Ah, this one right here. Not that bad. It's pretty simple, I think. Here's why. You could do this with a calculator. First, we're going to use the integral rule. That's 1 over 2 to the 3. Well, what is 2 to the 3? 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. There we go. 1 over 8. There's your answer. Let's take a look at this next one. 9 to the 3 over 2. Okay, so that's the same thing as 2 square root of 9 to the 3. Or we can write it as square root of 9 to the power of 3, like that. I like the second one better. What is the square root of 9? 3. The power of 3 is 27. We did that in questions before. Next one, 25 to the 0. Well, what is anything to the power of 0? Now let's take a look here. If I have 3 squared, that's equal to 9. 3 to the 1 is equal to 3. 3 cubed is equal to 27. We notice every time we are dividing by 3. As we go down, 1 here, we divide by 3. Or we divide by the base. So then this one is 3 to the 0 is going to be, well, we divide the base by 3, 1. So anything to the power of 0 is 1. Okay? Next one. We're looking at 16 to negative 1 half. First problem is negative. Oh, those negatives are frustrating. So we're just going to take the reciprocal. And we have 16 to the 1 half. Well, what are we going to do next? I'm going to go 1 over square root of 16. Because it's a, we just rationalize it, make it a radical, and like that. And 1 over square root of 16 is just 1 over 4. There we go. All right. So the next part here is an investigation. There are two parts to it. I'm going to check tomorrow and see if you do it. I'm not going to help you with it. I want you to do it. If you do have any questions on it, ask me tomorrow. But I do expect you to do these investigations. They're very good, and they'll help you understand what an inverse is and the definitions of an inverse. So I also want you to do these parts here, part one and part two, before you get to this question here that I'm going to do for you. Okay? So here's how we do this question. So I want you to do those first, pause it, do those, and then, not, and then come and see how we do this last question number four. So here's how we do question number four, class example number four. It wants to find the inverse of this equation. So step one is we're going to switch the y and x because the inverse always means we're switching y and x. Your y becomes your x value and your x becomes your y value. Okay? So inverse just means we switch them. Sorry about that. Camera froze. Sorry about that camera froze. So here we go. We have the x to the 5, or 5x. We want to switch the x and y because that is the inverse. All right? So first we switch the x and y. So we have 
x is equal to y, 5y, minus 6. So step 1, I want to write that down, is we switch our x and y's. Step 2 is going to be we solve for y. That's it. So we go in reverse here. Think of like changing a tire or putting on your shoe. So to solve the original equation, this, what would we do? We would go 5 multiplied by x, and then we subtract 6. Now, think of putting on a shoe. So first thing you do is you put on the shoe, then you lace up your laces, then you tie it. Now we're going the exact opposite order, because we're solving for this side, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to take off the shoe first. Or sorry, first we untie, then we unlace, then we take off the shoe. So it's the exact opposite things in the opposite order. So we do the last thing first. So and the opposite. So it's the opposite plus six. So we plus six. So we get x plus six is equal to five. Y. Then the next thing is we divide by five. Divide by five. So I end up getting y is equal to x plus six divided by five. And that is your inverse. Okay. Good luck on your assignment, and I see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow as we tackle the assignment together. If you need help. See you tomorrow, Math 30.